And so that brings us to the data from randomized controlled trials. Now the DASH trial is the, um, the landmark study in which the current recommendations are based on. Now, DASH was published in 2001, New England Journal of Medicine. What they did in this trial is they compared um, different levels of sodium intake uh, in groups subdivided by uh, whether or not they were, on, uh, uh, they, they were on a control diet that was very low in potassium or a DASH diet that was high in potassium. So this is a factorial design randomized trial. It was a feeding study. And what they found was that among people with the, that were consuming the control diet, this was a very low potassium diet, lower than the, than the typical American diet. We see that sodium reduction results in a substantial reduction in blood pressure. But among people who got the DASH diet, which was high in potassium, we see that the effect of sodium on blood pressure is modest or, or even non-existent. It's, it's quite flat, uh, despite large reductions in sodium. Meaning it's not just a sodium story, it's also a potassium story. If we give people large amounts of potassium, we can mitigate or offset the effects of sodium on blood pressure. And this is also, remember, a largely uh, salt-sensitive uh, group of people that they selected for the study. So the DASH trial has been the primary basis for the current AHA guidelines and the, and the U.S. National Dietary Guidelines. Important to note that the DASH trial was a proof-of-concept study as to whether changes to multiple aspects of the diet, including sodium, under controlled situations will reduce blood pressure, in that all of the food is provided to participants over a period of five weeks. So, and the, the outcome, of course, was blood pressure. This was not designed to assess if sodium reduction also reduces cardiovascular disease and mortality in free living populations. So, but nevertheless, the current recommendations are largely uh, based on DASH. And so, in, uh, here's a meta-analysis of randomized trials in 2011, a Cochrane review published uh, by Grottle. Uh, 71 RCTs um, in normal intensive individuals. You could see in the forest plot, some trials showed a significant reduction in blood pressure. Uh, most of the trials showed no significant effect or neutrality, and a few showed an increase in blood pressure. DASH is one of these many different studies. Now, collectively, we see overall, when you pull across all of the data, you see only a 0.4 millimeter mercury uh, decrease in systolic pressure per gram reduction in sodium. Since again, it's a very modest effect in normal tensive people, larger in hypertensive people, but normal tensives, it's rather modest. Um, and so uh, in 2011, we uh, looked at data from on target. Uh, now this was, this was a secondary prevention study, people with pre-existing cardiovascular disease or diabetes. 28,000 people followed up over 56 months. Uh, morning fasting urines were collected at baseline, so we were able to measure sodium excretion versus um, cardiovascular outcomes. And you could see the, we had over 4,700 clinical events accrued during the follow-up. And you can see there's a sweet spot in the middle of, from about three to six grams per day associated with the lowest risk. At higher levels, above six grams per day, you start to see an increase in the risk for future clinical events. But at low levels, below three grams per day, you also see an increased risk. So being in the middle is optimal. If you were to consume what the current recommendation is, 1,500 milligrams for this population, you would be putting yourself at increased risk based on this data.